Alright, sino dito mga busy? Are you busy? A lot of work to do? Diba? Sometimes we're going through that and maybe today we're going through those tough times again. And how we wish that we have so many hands so that we may have so much work to do. Ganyan ba itsura na natin ngayon? We want so many hands. Why? Because our work is very loaded. Dami nating work sa ating desk. Diba? Bro? Dami nating work sa ating... Ganyan ba itsura natin ngayon? Sa school, sa work, or maybe even here at church, our desk is full of files. So we have so much work to do. But the question is, do you enjoy your life today? Could you ask your seatmate right now, do you enjoy your life today? Just like in Facebook, how would you rate your life today? Is it a thumbs up? Is it a heart? Love nyo ba yung life you today? Is it a happy face? Or a wow face for our lives? Or is it a sad face? Or a mad face sa ating buhay? How is your life today? Are we enjoying it? So let's open our Bibles, if you have it with you, in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 12, and it says here, Then I turn myself to consider wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the man do who succeeds the king? Only what he has already done. So let us bow down our heads and let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord God, Jesus Christ. Lord God, we invite, humbly invite your presence, Lord God, to be in this place. Lord God, we don't want this, Lord God, to be about us, Lord God, but it is all about you. And right now, Lord God, we ask for your anointing, we ask for your wisdom, and we ask for your favor to be upon us today. Lord God, bless your people. Open our hearts, open our minds, Lord God, that we may hear clearly your word for us, Lord God. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. Could just give God again our very best clap offering. So the person or the king who wrote this letter, who wrote this verse is King Solomon. Do you know King Solomon? Yes, he's the richest man in the world. He's the wisest man in the world. And this, in his time right now, in this verse, he was pondering on these two things. What is the sense of my wisdom? What is the sense of my folly? Why? Because when I end my life, when I die, who will succeed me? Where will this all, all these riches, all my glory go? Sabi niya, only what he has already done will be given to the next in line. So he was confused about that, what's happening with this life. So first, let us describe, let us define what wisdom is. Can you ask your seatmate right now, do you have wisdom? Of course, diba? God has given us that wisdom. But in, in Proverbs 9 verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is is understanding. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We would only fear the Lord if we have knowledge of who God is. If we know that He is a victorious God, He's the King of kings, He's the Lord of lords, He's powerful, He's all present in our lives, then we would fear the Lord because He is God and we would know what is right and what is wrong because our, we are in front of our God. And because of wisdom, we get to have that understanding for our lives on how to choose wisdom, how to choose to do what is right for our lives. So basically, wisdom allows us to be good in God's sight because we know what is right, we know what is wrong, and with wisdom, with understanding, we get to apply what is right in our lives. Therefore, if we are in good in God's sight, in verse 11, it says, for by me, for by wisdom, your days will be multiplied and years of life will be added to you. Who wants long life here? Do you want to live until 200 years old? So I don't want to live 200 years old. But if you want that, if you want to live a long life, if you want to live a blessed, prosperous life, may you have wisdom in your lives. On the other hand, who is folly? What does folly mean? It is a new word for all of us, but basically folly means it is an act of foolishness or a foolish idea. So that's basically it. Folly is doing something evil, doing something foolish, not a bad idea. And therefore, Solomon says in the next verse, it says in verse 13, Then I saw that wisdom excels folly as light 
excels darkness. So wisdom and folly are two separate things. It's like light and darkness, good and bad, wise and a fool. So it's two different things. Talagang opposite silang dalawa. And what does Solomon say in verse 14? Yes, the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. Yet, dito na nagkatalo, yet, I myself perceive that the same event happens to all. Wow! But that's very discouraging. Why? Because what happens to the wise, what happens to the fool, at the end of it, they have the same ending. Wow! Solomon could not accept that. Just like this guy. Do you know this guy? Have you seen him in Facebook? You know what? He's a top-notcher in the board exams. But how did he become a top-notcher? While reviewing, while studying, he was playing computer games. Dota, StarCraft, Red Alert. Wow, di ba? I would like that kind of skill. You're studying for a board exam and the top notch ka. Pero what you're doing was you're just playing computer games. So this is the full example of a full playing computer games in preparation for a board exam. But on the other hand, the wise man was really studying hard. Wala na siyang friends, no computer games, not enjoying life, working so hard and try to pass the board exam. Yes, he topped the board exam, but he, now he knows me top notch din pala who just played computer games wow this brings us to madness we could say that that's a, that is unfair i worked hard pero we have the same ending this person didn't work hard but still top notch and that leads us to our title for today which is mad max so when we see alam yung show na yan alam yung movie na yan mad max and that's our title for today when, when we don't see the value of wisdom and folly, when we see that it has the same ending, it leads us all to madness. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What is the ending of a wise man and a fool? So are you ready to hear God's word today? Amen. I'm also excited to preach to you God's word. So in verse 13, it says, So because of that, I don't see the wise and the fool's ending. I don't see and don't get what it means. So Solomon said in his heart, in my heart, as it happens to the fool, it also happens to me. I'm wise. Now, therefore, why was I then more wise? What is the purpose of my wisdom? What is the purpose of me doing good in God's sight? What is my purpose of being a wise fool? But hindi na lang ako maging foolish in my life. I said in my heart, this also is vanity. This also is meaningless. So what does vanity mean? This is what vanity means. Something that is empty. Something that is valueless or something that is meaningless. We don't get it. There's no meaning into it. There's no purpose into it. There's no direction. There's no significance. That is vanity. And you know what? Vanity drives us mad. Vanity drives us very mad. So this is a picture of the, a mad guy, a crazy guy. So could you look at your seatmate right now? Does he look like that? Does she look like that? Maybe she is under vanity right now. And I remember the time when I was still working. Are there any people here working? Or do you have your own business? So at, the, at my time, like two years ago, I was still working. And in my work, it's not the fault of my company. But I was just starting at work. It's my first job. And then uh, it, the, the department that, that I'm under is just new. So I don't have any projects. So for the first three months, guess what I was doing? I was doing nothing. So nothing at all. I was just talking to my friends, meeting new people, and just shaking them ha their hands and just talking to them. So in the next six months, guess what? I was still doing nothing. Nothing at all. Literally nothing. And then I expected maybe after, when I reached my first year, I would do something already. But guess what? When I reached my first year, I was still doing nothing. So at that time, when I'm re-evaluating myself, man, they're paying me big, promise. They're paying me a big salary, big benefits. But I was doing nothing. Sarap buhay, di ba? I was just sitting at my office, staring at people. Sometimes I'm sleeping, but they're paying me that much for my job. But I'm doing nothing. I, it's meaningless. It's in vanity. 
But I prayed about it. I still stayed there. And guess what? When I reached almost two years, I was still doing nothing. So I stayed in that job for almost two years. And it drive me mad. It did drive me really crazy. So in that long period of time, what do I do for my office on the seventh floor? I go down to the lobby. And then guess what I do? I would talk to the security guard. So, kuya, kamusta ka na? Wala akong ginagawa. Ikaw rin, no? Wala akong ginagawa. So, wala kaming ginagawa parehas. And then what would I do? I would go to the fire exit and climb the stairs up to the topmost floor. And then what would I do when I'm already there? Wala lang. I would go down again, going to the lobby. So, I was crazily mad. And the most foolish thing I did, did the maddest thing I did, after lunch, guess what I did? Because I was so bored, I was doing nothing, it, everything was vanity. I went out to the mall, and guess what? I watched the new movie, Spider-Man. <laughs> and after I watched the movie, Spider-Man, I enjoyed I go back, get back to the office, and I timed out. And I went home already, diba? Because everything was vanity, I became foolish, I became mad. I didn't appreciate my job. So that's, this is how I look like, literally. Almost two years of doing nothing, that's how I looked like. That's madness. And in verse 16, it says, For there is no more remembrance of the wise than the fool forever, since all that is now will be forgotten in the days to come. So this is the same ending of a wise man and a foolish man. Both of them shall be forgotten. And we don't want that, right? Being Doing what is good. And then at the end, we're going to be still be forgotten, just like this man. Do you know this man? Who knows this man? You don't know this man? I don't know this man too. Why? Right? When there was no Manny Pacquiao, when there was no big shot Manny Pacquiao, Pancho Villa was there. So who knows Pancho Villa? So wala pa rin makikilala kay Pancho Villa, but in his time, he was the Manny Pacquiao of his time. Why? Because he's the first ever Asian and Filipino world champion. Para talaga siyang si Pacquiao in, in the Universal World Flyweight Division of Boxing. So, what did we say there? He's, he's a good guy. He's a great guy at his time. But in the end, he'll still be gonna be forgotten. And in the next verse, it says, so this is what Solomon was thinking about. The next verse, it says, And how does a wise man die? We're all wise men here. And how will we die? As a fool. So a wise man and a foolish man, we have the same thing. We are going to be forgotten. And we're going to have the same death. All of us are going to die. Even you're a wise man or a fool, we're both going to die. And in Ecclesiastes chapter, in verse 7, and it says, Therefore, I hated life because the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me, for all is vanity and grasping for the wind. When he realized, at the end, din pala, I'm going to be forgotten. At the end, Solomon will die as well, just like a fool. So because of vanity, it gave him so much stress, and he hated extremely his life. And vanity produces stress for our lives. Could you look at your seatmate? Are they stressed right now? Maka stress yung mga katabi natin. Maybe they have not found their purpose. They have not found their significance. That's why we look stressed. Yeah? That's what it does. And this is the statistics of today. You know what? One out of four deaths among young people of today is caused by suicides. Yeah, top number is suicide, 23.3%. And what is this cause? This is their causes. So number one, they withdraw. This is their warning signs. They withdraw from friends and family. Talking about feelings of hopelessness, persistently angry or sad. Yan mga, mga warning signs of a suicide person. Increasing use of drugs or alcohol. Self-harming. Writing or talking about death or suicide. And finally, experiencing mental health problems. Could you ask your seatmate right now? Rate from 1 to 10. Are you experiencing mental health problems? Anong si Baymax lang, no? 
are you experiencing health, mental health problems? So the suicidals were experiencing all these things. Why? They were having so much stress in their lives produced by vanity. Why? Because they don't know anymore the reason for living. They don't know their purpose anymore. Everything is meaningless and it has produced so much stress in our lives. So stress due to vanity. Now in verse 18 it says, so Solomon all the more hated all my labor in which I had toiled under the sun because I must leave it to the man who will come after me. So Solomon had great achievements, amen? He had so many accomplishments. These are his achievements. Number one, he was able to finish God's temple. His father David didn't have that opportunity, didn't have that privilege, but Solomon was able to finish God's temple. Second, because of his wise skills, because of his understanding, because of all his knowledge, because of all his craftsmanship, Israel became prosperous. Yumama ng Israel dahil kay King Solomon. And finally, he didn't stop there. He advanced research and development. So this is King Solomon. And that is just a part of his accomplishments. There's a full list of his accomplishments and achievements. And what he's thinking about where will all these things go? When I die, where will all these things go? In verse 19 it says, And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool? Who knows if his successor, if his child, or his uh, whoever will come up to the throne will be a wise or a fool? He has no control on that. He's uncertain about that. And yet, he will rule over all my labor in which I toiled and in which I have shown myself wise under the sun. This also is vanity. So everything that he had accomplished, every success, every riches and glory is uncertain if the next in line will be able to handle it. It is vanity. And the same thing, if we're you're a wise or a fool, we have the both ending. Same ending. We, our legacy is uncertain. Our legacy, our future, the next generation, it is uncertain. We don't have any control about that. Just like this man. Do you know this guy? Who's this guy? This is Henry C. And he's a billionaire, one of the richest men here in the Philippines. And how did um, Henry C. start his legacy? He started in a small shoe shop. It's a shoe mart. That's why it's called SM. So I forgot where it, uh, uh, where it started, but, but my dad keep on talking about it and telling me a story that Henry C. started very small with the shoe mart, shoe shop. And now look at him right now. He has one of the biggest malls in the Philippines, the Mall of Asia. Wow, blessed, so blessed, so prosperous, so achievable, uh, so accomplished, Henry C. And blessed now, he's blessed why he got his family at his back. His children are there to support him. His children are there to continue the legacy. And that's wonderful. But if this is not happening, if there's no one to, uh, to follow him and continue his legacy, wow, everything that Solomon did was in vanity. And vanity says here in verse 20, it says what happened to him. Therefore, Solomon turned his heart and despaired of all the labor in which I had toiled under the sun. Solomon turned his heart. He was in despair. He was in distress. He had gone into madness, and he turned his heart from the Lord. And that's what vanity does to us. Vanity turns us, leads, brings us to our turning point. Why? Because in this world, there are just two things, a wise man and a foolish man. And for all those years, we've been trying to be wise. We've been trying to be good in God's sight. And then we end up like this. We don't know our ending. We have the same ending pala as a fool. So now everything becomes meaningless and we are led into madness and turned away from our God. So why, why, why was he brought? Why was Solomon brought to his, to his turning point? Why? Because in verse 21 to 23, it says here, For there is a man whose labor is with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, yet he must leave his heritage to a man who has not labored for it. This also is vanity and great evil. Why? Because Solomon was not an average. 
Solomon didn't do it just to makaraos lang, to just survive. But Solomon did everything with wisdom, knowledge, and skill. What does that mean? He gave his excellence in his life. And then he would later know that he has the same ending with the fool. Wow. Everything is vanity. It had led him to his, to his madness. And second, for what has a man for all his labor and the striving of his heart with which he has toiled under the sun? Not only excellence did Solomon achieve, but he was striving with his heart. All his heart, he was striving for perfection. It was hard. It was not easy. And then at the end, he would just realize everything is in vanity. And finally, it says here, for all his days are sorrowful and his work burdensome. Even in the night, his heart takes no rest. This also is vanity. All the sorrow that he had experienced, all the burden that he'd bared, all the sleepless nights, that caused greatness. He was trying to achieve greatness. And in the end, he realized the excellence, the perfection, the greatness, everything was in vanity. Everything was meaningless in his sight. But there's a turning point when he received God's word for his life. This is what happened to him in verse 24. Therefore, because of all the meaninglessness, of all the vanity he realized, he came to a point, he came to a realization that in verse 24, now nothing, therefore nothing is better for a man that he should eat and drink and that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw was from the hand of God. Amen. We've been trying to push ourselves so hard. Nothing's bad about that. We've been trying to be excellent. We've been trying to perfect things. We've been trying to be great. All effort, all out in our school, in our business, in our work, even here in church, we've been giving our all. But maybe we forgot to enjoy life. We forgot to enjoy our lives. Yes, nothing's bad to work hard. But if we miss the blessing of enjoying life, luging lugi tayo, mga kapatid. And in, in the next verse, it says in verse 25, it says, For who can eat or who can have enjoyment more than I? Solomon realized, if there's a person who could enjoy this life, it is me. I have everything. I know everything. Whatever I want will happen. Yes, but he missed it. He missed to enjoy and that's the word of God for us today, that we must enjoy life because this is God's gift for us. And how we may enjoy life, number one, save, right? Save, but also spend. My dad always told me that, that what is the sense of all his riches? What is the sense of him saving for us if he doesn't spend it for us as well? Kung ipon siya ng ipon, hanggang sa mamatay na siya, nag pa rin siya para sa amin. Di ba? Sayang. Sayang ang pera. So while he has wealth, let's enjoy it together. And that's, the second thing is, aside from spending, be with your family. Diba? This is a one way to enjoy our lives, being with your family. So okay ba ang ating relationship with our family members? Diba? If we're not okay with our parents, if we're not okay with our children, if we're not okay with our siblings, oh no. We miss to enjoy life. We miss it. And that's so sad for all of us. And in verse 26, it says, For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in God's sight. So nandun pala yung enjoyment. The promise will be given. A promise to be given wisdom, knowledge, and joy is to the one who is wise. To the one who is good in God's sight, who is, has wisdom in his life. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may give to him who is good before God. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind. So now, at the end, Solomon asks, what is the purpose of my wisdom? What is the purpose of me? What is the purpose? Why? Because enjoyment comes to the person who is good in God's sight. And that's the promise we have to claim and enjoy 
life. But sabi dito, to the sinner, ano sabi dito sa sinner? He gives the work of gathering and collecting. And when I imagine this, ano ba yung gathering and collecting in my own terms? This is how it looks like a garbage truck, a garbage man. That's a task of um, gathering and collecting. Meron po ba dito nangarap na maging basurero? May nangarap po ba sa atin dito maging garbage man? Diba? No one dreamed to be a garbage man. Even my, when, I, when I was little, when I was a kid at elementary, yan ang panakot sa akin. If you don't study, kasi hindi ako nag-aaral eh. Tamad ako mag-aaral. If you don't study, ayan ang bagsak mo, magiging basurero ka. But no offense to the garbage man, this is a decent job. But for sure, I know this, di ba? We could say that our garbage man would also like to get out of this life. There's a better life outside the garbage, right? There's a life outside the garbage. But when we are foolish, when we are sinners, when we remain sinners and live a life of fa- folly, this is how we end up into madness. And we don't like that for each and every one of us right now. That's why this is what happens. This is the difference of a wise and a fool. Yes, the wise is, and the fool will be forgotten for sure, yes. The wise and the fool will have the same death. The wise and the fool, they are uncertain of their legacy. Ako rin, I'm not sure if my child will continue my legacy. But here's the, the ending, the promise for a wise man. They are given the promise to enjoy life. Why? Because they are good in God's sight. But for a folly, for a foolish man, will end up and stick into life. of madness, a life of madness, a life, no life in our lives today. So Solomon, look at this point in verse 12. Then, we go back there. Then I turn myself to consider wisdom and madness and folly. So what did he come to know? What did we come to do today? That a wise man and a foolish man could both end up into madness. into having no life. The folly, why? Because they are doing foolish things. They don't get to have the, uh, a good life. But for a wise man, each one of us here are a wise man. That's why he, we're here in church. But we end up in madness. Why? Because we miss to enjoy our lives. And this is God's word for all of us. Do you believe that you are wise in God's sight? Amen. We believe that. We are good in God's sight. And what is God's word for us today? In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, if you're running low, if you're going into madness, if you're going to stressful times, if you're at your turning point, you don't know the purpose of life anymore, God says to you, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Know today that all your hardship, all your sorrow, all your work, all your labor for the Lord, God sees it all. Your parents right now, your child right now, your friend right now, your boss right now may not see every work that you do. But God sees it all. All your wise deeds, all your good deeds in God's sight is not in vain. Because He will reward us for us to enjoy our lives. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And this is where would, I would like to end. Do you know this guy? Who knows this guy? He is Steve Jobs. And what did he create? He created the iPhone. He had it. He, he, when we look at Steve Jobs, he's the, one of the richest guys. He's a great guy. He's a wise man. Right? He's a wise man. But... Everything will come to an end. A wise or a fool, they would come to an end. And this is what happened to him. He already died. He already passed away. But before he passed away, before Steve Jobs passed away, he wrote something about his life. And I would like to read it to you today. This is the words from Steve Jobs in his letter. He says, I reached the pinnacle of success in the business world. In others' eyes, my life is an epitome of success. Yes, he's already there. No one could match him today. He's great. He's everything. He had everything. However, he says, aside from work, 
I have little joy. I have little joy. In the end, you know what? Wealth is only a fact of life that I am accustomed to. It's just something to have. But at this moment, lying on the sick bed and recalling my whole life, I realized that all the recognition, all the wealth that I took so much pride in have failed and become meaningless in the face of impending death. All his hard work, what he's done, the iPhone, this is not easy. Not each one of us, we're going to have a hard time to create another iPhone. He was great. He was successful. He was excellent. He was a perfectionist. But he says here at the end, he is wealthy as well. But everything is meaningless in the face of impending death. Now he says, now I know when we have accumulated such sufficient wealth to last our lifetime, we should pursue other matters that are unrelated to wealth. Should be something that is more important, perhaps relationships, perhaps art, perhaps a dream from younger days. Non-stop pursuing of wealth will only turn a person into a twisted being just like so at the end of Steve Jobs' life, wow, he would say, I was just like the other people. I am ending my life into madness, into nothingness, into meaninglessness. Sabi dito, material things, loss can be found. Wealth, it's just there. It's just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of gold. It's just material things. A car is just material things. But there is one thing that can never be found when it is lost. And that is your life. The life that God had given to us. So what does he say in the end? Therefore, treasure, lo treasure love for your family. Love your spouse. Love for your friends. And treat yourself well. Cherish others. I don't know if Steve Jobs became a Christian or he got to know God at, the, at his dying bed, at the last moments of his life, but a wise man, a person of success. We would like to be like Steve Jobs. I would like to be like Steve Jobs. But in the end, he says, everything is meaningless. Everything is nothingness. Everything is vanity. And he also is leading us Simply enjoy life. Enjoy life while you have it. And this is our outer call. If you're the one who is in folly, if you're the one who is living in foolishness, if you're the one who is living in evil deeds, I would like to later invite you to come to my right. And we will pray for you saying, Lord, enough of my foolishness, enough of my evil de deeds. Today, I want to enjoy life, the life that you've given me on my right for the folly. But for the wise people, yes, most of us are wise men, church people, uh, successful people, not doing drugs, not doing addictions. Yes, wise people. But as we've been wise, maybe you're saying right now, Oh Lord, I've been working so hard. I've been working my all heart out, but I miss to enjoy this life. I miss, the, I miss to enjoy the companionship of my family. I miss, Lord God, my, my spouse. I'm not speaking to my spouse anymore because I've been trying to work hard to get wealth for my family. And Lord, I miss to enjoy your presence in my life. Because I've been trying so hard to work it all out. But all you want pala is to enjoy life. So if that's you, the folly who wants to enjoy life, a foolish man who wants to enjoy life, I invite you to come to my right. And for the wise man who also wants to enjoy life, I invite you to come to the left and we will pray for you. So as the worship team sings this song, freely come, not to me. 
but to the name of Jesus Christ. If that's you, you may now come in the presence of God. to enjoy life today just come to Jesus and he will allow you to enjoy this life Invite everybody to please stand up. Let's worship the Lord God in heaven.
came back already to your seats, was here in the altar, I could just invite you to come back here and we will pray for you. We're going to say a prayer to the Lord. But first here to the people who live a life of foolishness, and that there's nothing to be ashamed of that. I also lived a life of evilness, and that's the reason for this church. We have a church, why? Because this is a place for sinners to receive Jesus Christ. And you don't need to be ashamed, for Jesus Christ died on the cross to save you and me. And for those who are here at my right, could you raise up your hands? And could you pray this prayer with me? Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, say it with your, all your heart. Lord, forgive me for all my sinfulness, for all my evilness, for all my foolishness. And that's the reason why I don't get to have that happiness. I don't enjoy life because I'm still living in sin. And right now, Lord, I put an end to that curse. And today, I choose to be wise and be good in God's sight and follow you, Lord Jesus, for the rest of my life. And here in the left, maybe we're like Steve Jobs who just worked and worked it all out for wealth, maybe not wealth, but for greatness, for accomplishments and achievements. But in the end, it's not that your end, but a man who was at his end realized that everything is meaningless. At the face of death, everything is nothing in vanity. And it is God's word for you. Before you die, before you face your death, try to enjoy life. Why? Because God is amazing. We are amazed and we are in awe of God because of the life that He had given us. It's not wise to not enjoy this life. So raise up your hands to the Lord for those who came here in front, in my left. Let's pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I humbly come to you and ask for forgiveness, not only to you, but also to my family members and also to myself. Sorry for focusing on simply working. Sorry, Lord, for focusing on getting wealth and getting money. And now, Lord, I realize at the end of my life, Everything will be meaningless. And today, Lord, I choose to be wise. And I want to enjoy this life with you, with my family, and myself. And I give you all the glory. We just give God a very best clap offering. Jesus Christ, Lord God, thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you for your wonderful presence. I thank you, Lord God, for a life-changing experience today. Hallelujah. And today, could you raise up our tithes and offering to the Lord? Could we all rise up? and raise up our tithes and offering. This is a proclamation, this is a declaration to God that our lives is not anymore about wealth. Our lives is not anymore about work, work, work. Our lives is anymore not about success. It's not about perfection. It's not about greatness. Because at the end of the line, the end of our lives, everything will be meaningless. And this is what only matters today, that we enjoy life and enjoy the presence of God 
and we are called to worship Him in the spirit and in truth. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we lift up our tithes and offering to you in declaration that the worldly things, Lord God, that the material things has no power over us. Lord God, our family will not be dependent on money. Our family will not be dependent on our position at the office. Our family, our lives, Lord God, will not be dependent, Lord God, in the success or the greatness of our name. But our lives will be only dependent on one name who is Jesus Christ. And as we raise up our tithes and offering, that's our declaration, our commitment. That from this day forward, we are going to enjoy life. Because we are amazed of your goodness and your greatness upon us. And right now, here are your people. Lord God, thank you once again for this life-changing experience for each and every individual today, Lord God. You're true to your word, Lord God. Wala kang papalampasin, Lord God. Ang bawat papasok sa ballroom na ito, Lord God, ay mapabago, Lord God. Even this hotel will be changed and will be blessed because of your name, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, as we depart from this place, Lord God, bless us, Lord God, not only us, but our families and everyone, that, Lord God, that we're gonna talk to for the rest of the week. At ikaw lang po makita sa aming buhay. We claim the victory, we give you the glory, and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah, God bless. Have a blessed week, have a victorious week. All the glory to our God. Hallelujah. Cause it's you